Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and the goal of this video is to get you up and running making Cuddle templates. In this video, I'll show you how to make a template that is composed of two matching layers with a shape in the back and some text in the front. This is a pattern that we see in a lot of templates, so I'm going to build a simplified version so I can show you some tips and best practices. To get started with my project here in the Cuddle site, I'm going to go to My Projects and click on the plus to start a new blank project. And the first thing I want to do is change the title of my project. So I'm going to call it the star uh, with name. I'm going to quickly sketch it out to show you what I want to do. So I want to have a shape in the back, let's say a star. So I'm going to grab this star from the left hand side. I'm going to scale it to be about three inches. And then my idea is that I want to have some text that gets placed in front. So something like this. So I would place the text right here and there would be a name, something like Lin, that gets cut as a separate layer. But I'm going to be applying a series of operations to each one of these elements. So I'm actually going to separate them into components. So let's start with that. Let me delete the text. And I'm going to change the name of my first component to be the backer shape. And I want this star to have slightly more rounded edges. So I'm going to apply this modifier called rounded corners. And I'm just going to change the radius so it's a bit more subtle. And I'm going to make the stroke line to be red because this is going to be a cut eventually. Now let's create another component just for the name. So I'm going to call it the name. And for this one, I want to use the fit within text. So I'm going to search here for fit text place it right in the center of the canvas and let's scroll a bit more and I want to change the rectangle so it fits within the radius of the star but it's still a little bit overlapping so instead of three inches I'm going to make it two and a half for the width of that rectangle and then here in the text let's try a name and let's make other changes to the text so I want the scaling to grow so it kind of fills as much of the rectangle as it can. And then I want to choose a font that is a little bit nicer. So let's try something like Retro Angela. So this is a kind of a handwritten font. And now if I look at it, I want to create another separate component to combine these two elements. So I'm going to call that one the backer. So on the backer, I'm going to have the backer shape and then the name. So this is my basic design. There are a couple of more things I want to do to make it functional. So let's go back to the name component. And then another thing I want to do is I want to join all the elements, um, including the eye, because I want this to be cut as a single shape. So let's select it. And here in the show more options, there is an option that says connect. And I want to connect the dots and the letters, because as you can see, the dot on the eye is going to be connected when I select that. And I'm going to choose the welding to be everything. So now this is going to cut as a single shape, which is very convenient for laser cutting. The next thing I want to do is extract the text as a parameter. So we can change that whatever we are in the template. So I'm going to click the three dots here next to the text and extract it as a parameter. And so I want to make it so it applies to the entire project. So I'm going to select here and the three dots again an option that says move parameter to project. So now when I go back to that backer element, when I change the text right here, then it should update. So that is working. So the actual backer is going to be more than this, because what I want is to join these two elements, the name and the backer. So when I place the name, the name has a sort of place to rest, especially these areas that don't uh, overlap the star. So I'm going to select both elements and I'm going to apply the Boolean union or weld modifier. So that gives me the backer as I want it. So now when I cut the backer and the text separately, I can uh, place the text like right on top like this. But I'm going to delete this one right now. Another thing that's really useful when you're gluing two layers together is to have a sort of guideline that helps you align it. So what I'm going to do is grab another instance of the name, place it here inside of the backer component, making sure it's right at the origin. So I'm going to contract it a little bit. So I'm going to go to modify and apply the contract or inset uh, modifier. It's contracting it too much, so we need to change that distance to something more reasonable. So I'm going to do about 0 0.03 uh, inches. And so that creates an outline that when I glue that name on top, 
kind of disappears, but it still helps me align it nicely. And we want that to be a score. And for scores, we generally like the stroke to be blue. So I'm going to change the stroke color to be blue. So when people send it to their laser cutter, they can select that as a score. And some of the holes here are a little bit redundant, like the hole on the D and the E. So we can actually get rid of those holes by applying another modifier to this name called the remove holes modifier. So this one is all the way down here. This creates a very simple outline that people can use to assemble their project. And just to confirm that everything's working, let's see if everything updates. Now to present it like a template, let's check out what we can do on the README. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to try and add a component. So I only have three components. Uh, I have this one called the backer and I can change the text here. But this doesn't look great because it doesn't give the user an idea of what the project looks like. So we like to create a preview component that adds some color. So let's go back here and create a new component and we're going to call that one the preview. And so the preview is going to have the backer shape again. This is an example of how we reuse components. And let's give it a fill. And I'm going to change the color to a sort of muted brown. And then I want to have that name on top. So let's place it right on the center of the canvas. And then let's add the fill. And let's give it a sort of uh, pale pink. So now this looks much more like what we want to see. Now in the README, I'm going to get rid of the component that I added before, and I'm going to add my preview component. So that looks a little bit nicer whenever we change the name. Uh, we can see what it looks like. But we want to offer the user a download that has the two shapes with the colors that we want to use for laser cutting. So I'm going to create another component called the cut. So one simple and very reliable way of creating this cut layout is using uh, this element that we call the auto layout. So I'm going to search here for auto layout. And I can use this one by simply placing it here on the canvas. And the way this one works is that when you select it, uh, you can type the names of the components that you have created here. So I'm going to type backer. So when I add backer, you'll see if I press play, then the backer appears. And if I add the name separated by comma, add the name, press play again, then that one appears right there. So this one creates a nice layout that separates the elements regardless of what their size is. One last thing I would like to add here is that I want the name to be red because it's a cut. So let's change the stroke to red. Now let's go back to the README and add that cut component because here we see the preview, but uh, we can add another component here by clicking Add Component. And here we want the cut. And so when the user hits download, they're going to get this file. But when they're looking at it, they're just going to see this preview. And you can tell that this is the file that gets downloaded because it has this little arrow that indicates what the download is. So that's the basic pattern for creating this type of project that has two layers and a nice preview and a nice cut file. Now let me show you a couple of projects that have the same pattern in action. This is the cheerleading bow back tag, so let's look at it. So you can see that we have a preview, and we also have that cut file that uses the auto layout and the blue score to align the letters. And if we take a look inside of the project by opening it in the Cuddle editor, um, you'll see that it uses also the same uh, type of components. We have the backer design, then we have the backer, and we have a name, and the preview and the cut. This look what I make magnet seems a bit more complex, but it actually uses the same technique. So we have this preview. Um, this is what we get when we download it. And if we open it in the Cuddle editor, we'll see some of the things that are familiar. There is a backer base. There is that backer with the blue inset score lines. There is a preview and there is a cut and there is the name component. There are a lot of projects that you can build using this particular structure. So I hope these tips were helpful and thank you so much for watching.